Let's talk about the skew t diagram. Sometimes called the skew t log p may be a little intimidating at first. Even the name may seem scary. Simply, skew t just means that the temperature lines, the t, are skewed off the vertical at a 45 degree angle. That lets the lines that are plotted on the chart go mostly vertical and not sailing off to the side. The log p means that the pressure lines are plotted on a logarithmic scale because the pressure in the atmosphere itself decreases logarithmically too. That makes the altitude scale linear, the way we normally think of it. We don't normally care about the pressure so much as the altitude it equates to, and those values are usually plotted along the side, though knowing a couple of them will help. Because the atmospheric pressure varies in any one spot, the following values are approximate, but close enough for us. At sea level, the atmospheric pressure is about 1,000 millibars, or hectopascals. If the spot you picked for the skew t plot is not at sea level, your chart will start at a different value. At 18,000 feet, we are at half the atmospheric pressure, or 500 millibars. Indeed, half the air molecules are now below us. No wonder you need oxygen. You can also imagine if the pressure didn't continue to decrease logarithmically, we'd be in outer space by 36,000 feet, which certainly is not the case. That one inch per thousand foot rule? Well, that only works in the lower atmosphere, as you can now understand. Anyway, at 10,000 feet, the pressure is about 700 millibars. Can you remember 10, 7? And since the altitude scale is linear, you can safely eyeball it from there. Though for extra credit, consider that the 850 millibar line is about 5,000 feet. The chart shows a plot of the dew point, temperature, and wind for the forecast time and place and allows some what-if questions to be answered. The first thing to notice is how the temperature and dew point lines relate to each other. As you know, when the temperature and dew point comes close together, you can expect clouds to exist. When that happens, it's easy to see on the diagram. The wind is plotted along the right side. The direction is plotted with the wind barbs to indicate the direction the wind is coming from and little tick marks to indicate the velocity in knots. You can easily see changes in wind direction at a glance. The wind velocity is also plotted with a line that has the scale at the top of the diagram. Here you can easily see changes in wind velocity. Sharp changes indicate wind shear, which is bad for thermals. The standard rate of temperature decrease in the atmosphere is about 2 degrees Celsius per thousand feet and looks like this. It starts at 15 degrees Celsius at sea level and progresses to minus 55 degrees at 36,000 feet. The next important line on the chart is called the dry adiabat. Notice it has a slight curve to it. This line describes how fast a parcel of unsaturated air will cool as it rises. Such a parcel would be a bubble of thermal air rising from the ground. The value for that dry adiabatic lapse rate is about 5.5 degrees Fahrenheit or 3 degrees Celsius per thousand feet. But you don't have to know that because it's already drawn on the chart. Now, we guess at what temperature the thermal air will start at and see how that plots against the temperature of the air aloft. The farther to the right of the temperature plot, the higher temperature differential between the thermal and the surrounding air and the stronger the thermal will be. If you try different initial temperatures, you can see what you need as an initial temperature for the thermals to rise to any particular altitude. Now, usually the rising air cools at a little faster than the atmosphere, so the temperatures eventually will meet and the thermal tops out. If the air temperature cools more rapidly than the altitude, with altitude than usual, the thermal will maintain or increase its difference with the surrounding air and will keep going or accelerate. This is called instability. It often leads to thunderstorms. In fact, it's required for thunderstorms. For this to be plotted, the temperature line will be to the left of the dry adiabat line. Now, following the dry adiabat line from our starting temperature, when it intersects the forecast temperature line, the thermal runs out of its ability to rise further. Our ability to climb on it will be at a lower altitude than that. Now, when the thermal air rises, not only does its temperature go down with altitude, so does its dew point. But the dew point doesn't drop as quickly as the temperature, so they may eventually meet. This decrease in dew point is plotted with a line called the mixing rate. Of course, when the temperature and dew point meet, you know what happens. The air becomes saturated with water vapor 
and a cloud forms. In the SkySight plot, the mixing rate is plotted with this little line here that moves with the cursor. Now a funny thing happens when a cloud forms. When the moisture in the air turns from vapor to water droplets, it gives off a little bit of heat in the process. This causes the parcel of air to cool off slower as it rises, making it even warmer than the surrounding air and a billowing cumulus cloud can form. Once saturated, the air then cools off at a rate known as the moist adiabat. Initially, this cooling rate is much slower than the dry adiabat, and as the air continues to rise and there is no more water vapor to convert to water, and things start to get frozen, the moist adiabat gets closer to the dry adiabat. These lines are drawn for you also, depending on the chart. On the SkySight version, this is shown as a dashed red line rising from the dry adiabat. You've probably heard of a temperature inversion. You might be able to associate it with hazy days and smoke trapped in a valley. An inversion exists when part of the atmosphere cools slower than normal or even warms with increasing altitude. This situation makes it very hard for warm air from below to rise, since it won't be any warmer than the air above it. Thermals won't work. In this example, we can see the temperature line shift to the right, showing a much reduced lapse rate, but it will still be warmer than the thermal air rising up to it, and therefore the thermal has no buoyancy to continue rising. This is a stable atmosphere. This is bad for thermals, but it's not all bad. Wave conditions require a stable atmosphere. A wave forms when displaced air wants to regain its place in the stable temperature gradient. So there you have it. A basic understanding of what the skew t diagram is all about. Of course, there's a lot more to be learned in further study, but you should now be able to identify the temperature, dew point, and wind plots on the skew t. Remember, 18,000 feet is 500 millibars, half the atmosphere, and 10,000 feet is 700 millibars, 107. You should be able to see if you expect a cloudy sky by the temperature and dew point lines coming close together. You should also be able to tell if the atmospheric lapse rate is stable or unstable by the slant of the temperature line relative to the dry adiabat line and how good a chance thermals have in rising and even when clouds will form from a thermal. And lastly, you should be able to identify an inversion that will put a lid on any thermal activity and approximately what altitude that will occur at. All with no mental math. I really hope this helps you understand the skew t plot and what we as glider pilots can use it for to forecast the soaring day. Thanks for watching. Please comment and subscribe below.